So guys, an APC spokesman has come out to say that Tinubu is in Europe resting. You know, since after the election, he left Nigeria. And, you know, they are telling us that he's there resting, as in gaining momentum for 29th of May inauguration. I wonder how this sounds, honestly. This is the kind of country we are building. You know, somebody was declared the president-elect. The next thing, he left the country. I wonder where such a thing is allowed in the world. It's only in Nigeria that things like that happen your verminous mob to order bio ananoga tells peter obi so guys we all know that when you go to twitter you know that really the apc and the obedience are always engaging you know in a fight because if you see what the apc writes about peter obi honestly you can check out first to skyamo's handle also go to femi kayode's handle you also check adamu galba's handle these people you need to read what they write about peter obi and what they also write about the obedience this shouldn't be a fight politics shouldn't be a fight but i tell you sometimes these apc people they are the ones initiating all this thing. you need to see what this adamu galba writes about peter obi he writes so many terrible things about peter obi and you know, one day he will come out to say he wants to vie for a presidency. Don't forget, there was a time he said he wanted to become the president of Nigeria. I think that was in 2015. He was one of the presidential candidates. But you need to go and see what he's writing about Peter Obi. There is no kind of name. There is nothing he has not said about Peter Obi. But look at them now crying foul, telling the world that obedience are the ones attacking them. Nobody can force me to leave Nigeria, Peter Obi. So guys, you know, Peter Obi sometime last week made a statement like this. So people were like, they are trying to force him out of Nigeria so that they can truncate the petition, so that they can truncate the petition that he has filed. And you can see him repeating it again. This was in Onicha when he went to help one of the LP candidates to campaign. He's saying that nobody can force him to leave Nigeria. So guys, there's no kind of game our politicians don't play. They go too far, you know. They want to do everything, you know, to make sure that this petition does not scale through. To make sure that the judiciary does not do justice to this petition. Our politicians are ready to go to any length, honestly. We saw how the election went. These people just, you know, they took Nigerians by surprise, you know. Honestly, it's really so painful considering how the INEC chairman kept telling us that results will be uploaded real time, you know, from the polling units to the INEC portal. That was what INEC told Nigerians. But when it got to that time, they said they didn't have any network or to that time they said they had glitches. You can see it that this was a planned deal as in this you can see that this was a planned deal because so this was something that was intentionally done by INEC. So guys, and still they are not resting. They are still working against Peter Obi. But know how God is with Obi. I am very sure that he's going to come out of this petition that he has fight victorious, whether they like it or not. So guys, Ngozi Okonjo Iwala has set agenda for Abia state governor elect. Alex Oti. So guys, I love reading articles about this woman because she's one of those people that really mean well for Nigeria. She really thinks about the progress of this country. You can see she's also showing her concern for the people of Abia State. You know, she has set some agenda for the governor elect in Abia. She told Alex Oti, Oti the areas he should really concentrate on. We know that Abba is really, you know, Abba is a state that can really make enough money for Nigeria. But because it's in the southeast, the federal government is not paying attention to that state, honestly. You need to see the talents that are in Abba. Oh my God, you need to see the talent. Nobody is paying attention to these people. Some of them, very young men and women. Our federal government is not paying attention, provided it's from the southeast. They don't pay attention to it. I don't know when this Nigeria is going to, you know, unify indeed. I don't know when. I just look forward to that time. You know, the way Buhari's government just threw away the Igbos, as in the Southeasterners, the thing is so touching. 
honestly is so touching not because i'm an Igbo, but i tell you it's really so touching you need to go to a bar and see what people are using their hands to manufacture and you begin to wonder if these people were given just a slightly you know more better condition than what they are having today you can imagine what they can produce honestly our bad people are so talented so i believe that this new governor elect you know if he can really plan well I believe Abba is going to stand out. Abba is really going to stand out because I know that this is an industrialized state. This is a state that produces so many things, especially when it comes to hand work. They are very good at so many things. And you know, some of them, if you see their products, you will not believe they are made in Nigeria. But I'm so happy that this woman is lending her voice. You know, possibly she might be working together with Alex Oti to also like guide him and make some suggestions to him because we know Ngozi Okonjo Wala is a very experienced woman she's so much experienced especially in the economy she has enough experience so i believe you know she i believe that she lending her voice to OT is really a good development and we are looking forward to you know Aba in Abia State transforming under Oti's uh, governance we are looking forward to the transformation of Abia State as a whole Honestly, that state is going to do good for Nigeria if only our government can start paying attention to the people living in that state. Abba is so much talented. So guys, before I share the video I have for you guys, I want to quickly talk about Hope Uzodema. He has emerged as the APC governorship candidate in Imo State. But I must tell you that since Hope Uzodema came to Imo State, you know, there have been so much problem in that state. You may not know the number of people that have been killed as in so many young men and women have just been you know killed in their in their prime age you will not believe what is happening and i don't know now he still want to come back again to rule for the next four years oh my god i pray that that will not happen i just pray i hope that the obedience are taking notes the obedience have to take over you know obedience have to take over emo state you know we want the lp to win emo state not hope who's or them are not the apc because the people of emo have gone through so much this this time the emo people have really suffered so we don't even need hope who's or them man. we don't need him at all so guys there's this bill you know that has passed second reading in the house of assembly they are they are saying that they want to stop medical doctors from traveling abroad as in if you're a medical doctor and you graduate you have to stay back for five years and people have been wondering that why is it that our politicians if they are sick they travel to abroad for their medical treatment we also know that they send their children abroad to study but the children of the ordinary man they want to control them they want to remote them they will tell you when to leave the country and when not to leave when some of them you know they cannot do without traveling abroad for their medical treatment we all know that the president-elect is not even in nigeria and people are rumoring that he's sick you know this is it the political class they only enrich themselves you know to take care of themselves and their immediate family but the ordinary man on the street does not get all these benefits that our politicians do get you can imagine when they are sick they travel out when their children are grown up they send them out of the country to study but if a poor woman that is selling vegetable manages to send his or her child to a medical school that child is mandated to come and stay for five years compulsory five years you know before you ever think of leaving nigeria so guys i'm going to allow you watch the video please don't forget to subscribe to my channel turn on the notification bell please give this video a like so that youtube can recommend it to others and let me know what you think in the comment section below please if you don't mind click the black button beneath to buy us a cup of coffee thank you Hello and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. It wasn't a lead headline story, but this piece of news has caused quite a ripple and sparked a debate, not only amongst medical practitioners at whom it's targeted, but amongst Nigerians in general. 
On Thursday, the 6th of April, a bill to amend the Medical and Dental Practitioners Act, CAP 379, which seeks to mandate any Nigerian trained medical or dental practitioner to practice in Nigeria for a minimum of five years before granted a full license by the council in order to make quality health services available to Nigerians and for related matters. Quite a mouthful there. Past second reading. Well, there isn't much to the bill, which is only a page long, but its implication for the practice of medicine in Nigeria could be huge if passed. While it has obviously enjoyed the support of lawmakers who saw it through to second reading, the Nigerian Medical Association has asked that the bill be withdrawn, while the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, the constituency which will immediately be affected should it pass, have tagged it an attempt to enslave them. On Hard Copy tonight, I speak with the sponsor of the bill, Honorable Ganiyu Johnson, on the thinking which led to this proposed amendment and how he's taken to the reaction so far. Honorable Ganiyu Johnson, thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me. Well, this bill certainly has gotten a lot of Nigerians talking about uh, one of the perennial problems that confronts us in our healthcare sector, mm -hmm. which is the issue of brain drain. Um, I'm wondering, I mean, you, I'm sure you must have heard quite a number of reactions to this bill. Some, of the, some people have said uh, that this bill is akin to cutting your head to cure a headache. Um, what is your reaction to that? Well, for me, I think uh, we're in, in the right direction. The reason being that we cannot continue to watch Niger I mean Nigerians die. We have over 200 million people in this country, you know, facing very few doctors. So, and these few doctors, there is always capital flight every year. So, the reasonable thing to do is one, yes, in as much as I agree that uh, we need to improve their welfare packages, which through my motion, I canvassed for that, I prayed for that, that, I mean, uh, on the same issue, because there was a motion that I raised on the same issue, that we need to improve on their welfare packages, we need to upgrade and maintain some health facilities such as the public health, uh, I mean, primary health centers. That's the basic f at the uh, local government. We should maintain, upgrade them, some of them to general hospital standard. Then we should also maintain and upgrade some of our general hospitals to specialist hospitals. Then we should also, hang on, we should also maintain and upgrade some of our specialist hospitals to research institutes. By doing that, we are creating jobs, openings for the doctors. That's now, a separate motion. No, it is tied to it. Uh, just a moment. No, I'm, tell I'm telling uh, no, you, no, no, I, I, because I, that is the basis of this bill. So while that might be tied to it, yes, I'm, I'm that's simply the trying to say that yes. it was not on the same day that you moved no, 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 bill. No, 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 no. Not the same day. Exactly. So not the same day, I know but that, it's tied to yes, it. Yes, quite a number of your, of your colleagues. I think yes. it was Honorable Sununu, who, yes. who, uh, who is also a doctor yeah. and who heads uh, the health committee in mm. the house, yeah. whom we spoke with, who said, oh, Previously, yes. you know, you seem to have had quite a bit of passion yeah. for the healthcare sector. Yeah. But that was at a separate, uh, this motion which you're talking about yes. was a separate day. Yes. Not the same day that no, you moved you this particular not the bill. Same day, but it's tied, that's, that's, that's the point I'm making. Yeah, so, but right it's now, the, the, the difference between what you are proposing right now mm. and the other one no, which you let, had let, brought let, before, let, one was let a motion. No, let I will let you land. land. I, I just need you land. to differentiate this. One no. was a motion. Yes. The other, that's this one, yes. is a, an amendment to yes. a bill yes. to an existing law. Correct. Which will certainly have immediate ramification 
should it pass? Mm -hmm. Motions oftentimes end up as recommendations. Correct. And advisory. It, exactly. Really, it's advisory. Yes. That's so, what I'm saying. So it's how time. come there was no law, no. a thought of law no. in that see, regard? That's why why you know, is it in this regard? You know, regard? this bill, I mean, bill usually passes through some processes. This is second reading. There's third reading. There's public hearing. I mean, it will still be transmitted to uh, the Senate eventually back before we transmit to Mr. President for his assay, before becoming a law. It's a long way. During, that's why I let me land. You see, that was the background you know, of this bill. The five years they are talking about, one, we are hoping that the five years is inclusive of the housemanship. You know, after graduation, there is this one year um, housemanship, mm -hmm. mandatory. Then thereafter, they are giving, as I, as I speak, they are giving their license for them to go and do their youth corps. Now, it's also inclusive of the youth corps period. So we have three years. Out of these three years, doctors will now be encouraged because after upgrading all these health facilities, they will now be encouraged to do their residency in those various hospitals. At the end of the day, we have specialists in different areas of medicine. Mm. Well, the, the, my do, medical... you, do, you, do you understand? Oh, yes. That is the so, passion I have. So just a moment yes. now. The medical practitioners say that there is a problem mm. with even this proposal in the sense that when doctors finish their program and do yeah. their housemanship, yes. you have also admitted that they're immediately given their license. No, uh, that as of today, they yes, are given their, their, their license. So all I'm saying which, now which, is that... Hang on. No, let me finish. All I'm, I'm saying trying is to make that, a point with a question. Wait, wait. All I'm suggesting... Mm -hmm. All I'm suggesting is that, yes, they can give them temporary license. Eh? After their five-year period, they can now get the full license. That's the only difference. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to ask you, how much consultation would you say that you had before you came up with this proposal? Yeah, I discussed with my, some of my doctor's friends in, uh, uh, in the house. In the House? Yes. In the House of Representatives? Yes. I discussed with some of them. Okay. Just, yes. just those ones? Yeah. And I read some literature, you know, I mean, that's all. You know why I ask this? Because, yes. I mean, only recently we spoke with uh, the two chairmen, at least Channel Television has had a yeah. conversation with the two chairmen yeah. of the, both the House and the Senate committees yes. um, on health. Yeah. And the two of them don't seem to be in agreement with your bill. Um, Senator Olori Egbe was very, very, you know, direct in saying that this bill looks a bit simplistic. I mean, I, those were not his words, mm. but it, 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 the summary of what he said mm. seemed to be somewhere along those lines. Mm. I think that the bill misfires. Uh, it doesn't seem to understand the problem sufficiently. For instance, Dr. Sununu, who says that there are two problems. There is the external brain drain issues, and there is internal brain drain issues, whereby medical practitioners are moving from rural areas uh, to urban areas. And in many instances, they are moving from places of perceived insecurity to places of relative insecurity. This bill doesn't address that. Um, Senator Laurie Agbe pointed out the fact that this bill could be discriminatory. Uh, the fact that only doctors are the ones that are targeted and that you're supposed to be looking at uh, you, you're looking at doctors who are just coming out of school. You're not looking at the real people who are leaving the system, who are doctors that have already been trained, they finished their residency, and the consultants that a lot of these countries seem to be after. That's where we seem to be losing a lot of personnel. How do you respond that, to that? Well, uh, I don't share that view with you, because if you take the inventory of those living this country, uh, these young doctors who just finished school, and who just finished their housemanship. Did you take the inventory? Yeah, I, I have, I have, um, it's, I conducted a kind of survey on my own. On your own? On my own, yeah. I noticed there's still heavy decline. There is capital flight of doctors from Nigeria outside the shore of Nigeria. So 
should we fold our arms? We have crisis for crisis. Yes, if other professionals are leaving, I'm not uh, too bothered because we are talking of human lives there. And that is my own concern. We are talking of human lives here. I mean, anybody who, who is into medicine believes, I believe that they are into humanitarian job. We are serving humanity. That is the thing. So if human lives are involved and we are losing them, how do we cope? See, we should not be too myopic about this thing that, ah, no, it's targeted at doctors. I'm looking at Nigeria. Yeah? I'm looking at it holistically. I'm looking at Nigeria. I'm looking at over 200 million people that are here. How do we uh, 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 um, service them? That is the issue here. All these things they are talking about. I, I mean, we should not have told you it's a stop gap. <laughs> no, did you get the point? Okay, so part of if, the premise. If, if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, why will World Health Organization issue a red alert on Nigeria? Just to why will, why will, so why will, as you rightly pointed me, out, why will UK is, uh, d d deny recruiting? Nigerian doctors. So it is you one know? thing. It is yeah. one thing for um, because, just, a they, uh, they, just a moment. Honorable, just a moment. It is case. one thing for um, the World Health Organization to say that. It is yes. one thing for doctors to by themselves. I mean, because they are they have rights like everybody. Yeah, else, of course. To choose to migrate, yes. you know, to other countries in search of greener pastures. Correct. It's another thing for countries mm -hmm. to come and actively mm -hmm. recruit our medical personnel because yes. they can. Yes. You know, that's another kettle of fish. Maybe that's yes. what the World Health Organization. That but works. is it is it is it right yeah. for us to say, you know what, everybody else, you can migrate. It is fine. But no, no, our doctors are no, prevented from migrating no, for no. at least a period of five See, years. After they have I just told service. you is the passion I have for the health service, health sector. So somebody else tomorrow can come up eh, on uh, uh, on IT people. Mm. I mean, but somebody else. Do you agree say, that this is discriminatory? It's there are those, not. There are those who say not. this is discriminatory and it's, that even by what the Constitution says, yeah. this bill should not be allowed to even see light of day. Well, I mean, uh, until then. The president of the World Medical Association, yes, he is uh, free. Who, has, who has faulted some of the statistics that it's, you quoted, he is wondering, for instance, how are you able to come by the fact that it is only 24,000 medical doctors that is remaining in Nigeria? You, yeah. you know, they're wondering where you got the figure from. Um, he's also wondering, you know, if you say that this is, you, you talk about how, how much it takes to train. Yes. Uh, medical personnel abroad and yes. how much it takes to train yes. medical personnel in Nigeria. Interestingly, Correct. on the floor of the house, when yes. you were making that point, yes. you, were, you were doing the multiplication yes. using the rates on the parallel market. You know, I mean, uh, 750 uh, naira per dollar. Yes. yes. Why, were you not so, using, why were you not using the official rate? How can I use it? I mean, people have access to official rates. At least students who go abroad to not learn. All, Just a not, moment. Not, I know that. Get not rates all, from, not the, all. from the central and as bank. At last, as at last December, they stopped. They stopped that concessional rate to students mm. as at last December. So I, it's, it's, I know what I'm talking about. See, I mean, it's, unless if we don't, we, we don't love this country, and that is the truth. We're already in crisis. Are you accusing doctors of not loving Nigeria? Well, I, I'm, I'm only, uh, this is my personal opinion. This is my personal, I told you. The personal we opinion have, is that doctors is that, don't love Nigeria? No, my personal opinion is that we have over 200 million people and at the rate at which we have capital flight on medical doctors it will get to a, a stage where everybody will be at standstill it is by allow words that will be consulting to treat us we should not allow that to happen and that's why world Health organization said hey slow down on your brain drain slow down well, Honorable, I know that, you know, as I pointed out earlier, some people have said that this bill is simplistic, that we think that simply by stopping our doctors, 
we have, you know, we'll solve the problem. Now, the problems are a little more complicated and it's not addressing the gamut of medical uh, professionals that are affected, the nurses, uh, the lab scientists, the um, people who work in x-ray, et cetera, et cetera, that all of them are living in droves um, and it's not addressing comprehensively the issues that are making them leave. Um, and you're only seeking to stop only a certain section of, you know, these people. Uh, have you, when, you, when you hear reactions like this, does it make you want to go and take a second look at the bill and say, really, will this bill really solve the problem that we have at hand? Yeah, there is another bill coming up. Another that, bill? Yeah, on, uh, on the Nazis and another one for the pharmacist. You want to stop them as well? A similar thing. Put a peg. I'm going to read that very soon. Do you understand? See, that's why I said, I mean, this is just the first phase and it's a short-term measure. It's not a permanent, so I'm not saying this is permanent solution. It's a, it's a stopgap, short-term measure for us to take stock of what we have and whether it's going to solve the problem or not is a different thing. But by the time we are able to uh, mitigate against this using this approach, I know with time it's going to be a win-win for the doctors and for the country as a whole. Okay, so let's look at it. You say it is a stopgap measure. A stop Let us assume that this bill even goes through and becomes law. What do you think it will immediately address? What does it address in the immediate term? Employment. Employment for, the, for who? For the doctors. Like I told you, the three years, the, the five years is inclusive of their housemanship, NYSE. Then the three years, we enable them to enroll for their residency. And by upgrading all those uh, health facilities, it will generate employment for them. Mm. The it will just a moment, the upgrading of health facilities yes. is not included in the bill. See, but, it see, is a motion which yeah. has not been addressed no, by the no, executive going, arm no, of government, it's, it's which has power of, to do it's, so. It's part of it. It's part of it. And that's the point I'm making. It's part of it. There is no way we can isolate the motion from this bill. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because they go hand in hand. That, that's where uh, we address the issue of welfare packages. But you haven't put them. the caveat there. You, know, you haven't said this bill should not go through unless yeah. the executive arm of government, you know, also it, implements this motion as just, passed I just, I just by the National you, Assembly. I just, I just told you that the bill had just uh, scaled the second phase. Okay. Well, this, Honorable, you've heard yeah. some of the criticism. Yes, yes I've heard, but that, I you know, know, that, I you know, it, 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 this is the bill that, that's you know, that it would anyway. seem that the National Assembly is passing. And when people try to make sure that public officers stay here yeah. to receive medical treatment, yes. one of the first things that immediately came up against that bill yes. was discrimination. Yeah. was that it is discriminatory and that there is no way you can stop people from going to go and seek health care yes. where, where they think they might be able to find it. Yes. Uh, so why do lawmakers now think it is okay for people not to seek greener pastures um, if the place where they are trying to serve, which is their country, is pushing them away? There are two different, uh, I beg your pardon, two different things. If we are facing crisis, for Christ's sake, right now in this country, on health sector, whether you like it or and that is my challenge with uh, those people that are opposing this. We have challenge, we have crisis, we have health, um, the health sector is facing a um, serious crisis for Christ's sake. What do we do? Do we fold our arms until we have total collapse? No. Mm. I, 
Uh, no, I don't, know, I, I don't know whether you heard once. I mean, I was able to get the Minister of Labor and Productivity sometime. Yes, yes. Um, I know where you uh, Yes, and where I asked, asked them to. And I asked, yes, was, uh, yes. And I, uh, about doctors and yes. he, you know, the brain drain problem. So, yes. if you, as a lawmaker, are seeing yes. this as a crisis, mm. but other people are not seeing Same it as, as, as a crisis, if it's, if don't we have a problem no, on our we hands? Do, we don't, because if World Health and a certain body can tell us we have crisis that they should remain. A senior body, World Health Organization. No, the World Health no. did not say they should remain. It no, they said, said as a result that of they brain should drain, stop recruiting. recruiting. That's exactly. what they said, what, not that the they mean? should remain. What's the, what's the meaning of that? Countries should and stop why recruiting. It's and not the why, same thing as No, and that's remain. why UK government refused to grant uh, uh, um, visas or stop recruiting medical doctors from Nigeria mm. as a result of that. Okay. Well, there's those who think that you have made doctors leave. Uh, you, have, you have made them afraid. And, you know, well, if this bill should go through, if they have you know, passion, you're, you're going, they're, they're that, afraid already and they might no. leave far earlier uh, than if, if they, they even have, plan to leave in the first place. If they have instance. passion for their job, okay, and they believe they are serving uh, the people, I don't think so. We are talking of the people. Uh, have you been to our hospitals in recent Yes. Doctor? I yes. mean, uh, you have to see doctors who have passion, but yes. the environment in which they operate yeah, that's why is, I is said really deplorable. Should, fine. That's why I said we are going to improve on the health sector by upgrading, maintaining and upgrading some of them. I don't know whether... That's, that, that's why I started... That's your proposal. Me, that's your motion. Me, excuse me. That's why I started from the basic primary health care. Right now in the federal government, let me yes. give you an instance. Yeah. According to the National Association of Resident Doctors, who were protesting that some of their members had not been paid, mm -hmm. it was that their members were hired or maybe on a temporary basis yes. uh, with, with some waiver, and that they, you know, for them to get that final approval from the office of the head of service mm -hmm. becomes a problem. Yes. And as such, their members were being owed backlogs of salaries, yes. which is still the case still today, because in the communique which they issued, kicking against this particular bill saying that this is an attempt to enslave them they're still complaining of this problem so these problems that are pushing them away still exist we haven't resolved them what we're now seeking to do is to force them to stay in a system that doesn't seem to want them see i continue to say that uh, that is not the issue for now you see we are, i'm talking of trying to improve on their welfare packages, where they will even have access to loans, they will have access to mortgages, you know, and improve uh, uh, their their uh, salaries. So you are only basing your uh, this thing on what is obtainable now, mm. now, 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 now. Mm, I'm just honorable, you know, sometimes... The bill may not even scale through in another one year. It is not bam, 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 like the that. The Ninth Assembly is coming to an end. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They will revisit it. You intend to pursue it somehow? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, are you, but you're not returning as we speak. Uh, you no, don't worry about that. I'm in court. You're in court? So I'm in court, yeah. Okay. So let's oh see how, about how that goes. But will you be willing, considering this sort of you know, reaction that, because when uh, doctors say that this is a bill that seeks to enslave them, uh, those are very strong words. Um, I, I don't know whether you're worried about those kinds of reaction. And if, it's, if it's, you'll be willing, if personal, you will be willing, personal, yeah, just a moment, opinion. if you'll be willing to have a consultation with them to rework the bill, if, you know, that, that is something that is open as an option. Is this something that you'll be willing to consider? Uh, like I said, um, during the next level, uh, we can work together. During the next level, that's at the committee stage uh, yes, or the public yes, hearing it's stage? Not, uh, it doesn't matter whether committee stage, uh, public hearing stage. I mean, it will be repackaged um, before advancing to the next level. That's all. You'll be willing to rework yes, the bill? Yes, yes. With them at the committee level.
Well, we'll see how that eventually goes. We certainly okay. will have our eye on the progress of this bill thank in you. the National Assembly and see how it goes in the Ninth Assembly. Honorable Ganiyu Johnson, thank yes. you for coming on Hard Copy. Yes, you can thank see you. what our politicians are planning to do. You know, they are just so self-centered. They only know about themselves, but when it comes to other people, they want to bring up bills, you know. Uh, before I even close this session, I want to remind you people that sometimes last year, one of the lawmakers brought up a bill, you know, he was wanting them to pass a bill to stop the National Assembly members from sending their children abroad, especially those of them that do it with public money. I was surprised to even know that they use public money to train their children. So when he brought up that law, come and see, some of, some of them stood up, you know, angrily. They reacted so badly. They were like, they cannot pass such a bill. Some of them claim they already have their children abroad even before they came to the House of Assembly. And, you know, that was how they, they, they shut down that, what I call it prayer or whatever they call it there. And now they want to face the ordinary people. Oh my God. I just pray that God will help Nigeria so that we will just, you know, retire all these politicians, all these old politicians. We need to retire them. We need to retire them. They don't even know that Nigerians who are going out is also for their own benefit. Because when they go out, they make the money, they send that money home. Some of them come back to Nigeria to build private hospitals. So you cannot just, you know, uh, restrain people from moving out because you want them to stay back to service uh, the, the people. Yes, it's good for them to stay back, but when our government cannot pay them, a good money for them to take care of their own family. What do you expect? All the money that was borrowed during this administration, what were they used for? So guys, that is where we are today. We are just hoping that God will help Nigeria at this time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification bell. Please give this video a like so that YouTube can recommend it to others. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you.